Next up, we have styles. In design system language, we call them tokens, and those are basically colors, typography, things that we can use across the system to stay consistent with uh, our color schemes and typography schemes and uh, also modular scales. So here we have all the effects to the right-hand side. If you click outside of any element in Figma, you can see all the text styles and color styles, and also we have styles for grid and some effects. Those are not the most important. The most important part are color styles and text styles. Basically, we have them separated uh, for body text, heading, and other, and we have some color styles, and those all are mapped one-to-one -to, -one to Webflow. So you'd have the same names for colors in Figma as well as you have in Webflow, and the same applies to text styles. So, for example, we have all of our headings, and in the headings you have XL, L, medium, small, all the things that you can uh, search for in Webflow's classes, in combo classes, and uh, the properties that we have applied to the text are exactly the same, so the same size, the same line height, spacing, and all those properties. We have them uh, common for Webflow and Figma. You can obviously change those in the style definition and then it will be automatically changed across the entire framework like you do to classes in Webflow. Here you'll change this general definition of XL header style and you can do it for colors as well. You can do it for all the styles that we've defined. You'll see that this uh, change happens in all of the components. So that's one way of editing those styles and how to know whether this style is applied for the specific element and how to apply it to the other elements. Well, if you select this particular uh, text frame, so this is text heading one, you'll see that we have this style applied in the right hand pane. Uh, this is this points to heading slash XL, meaning that this is connected to this style. And we can unlink it if we want to just detach it from our styles. We can unlink it or we can change uh, to whatever heading style we want. Also, we can edit the style directly from here. So you don't have to select the style elsewhere. You can click here and go to uh, directly to this style definition, edit the style, and this will be changed across the entire framework. Okay, now, what if you want to apply the style to a specific frame? If you select any other style and then you select the frame and start typing, you'll see that this style is automatically inherited and applied from the last selection that you had. The other way around is, and let's unlink this uh, text style. Uh, now it's as if you've created a new text frame so that you can change uh, those parameters freely and change the size. Now what you do is you click on the style, this four dots at the top right, and now you can either search or select the style to apply this particular uh, text style to the text frame. So it's as easy as that. And exactly the same rules apply to our color styles. So here you have uh, various color styles. Again, to access them, just unclick any element uh, of Figma, and here you'll have color styles in the categories, you create those categories with uh, forward slash, so you have primary, secondary colors, and here you can click on the edit button to edit this particular color definition. This is extremely similar to swatches that we have in Webflow, and this is basically how it works. The naming convention is also the same. So if you edit the swatch, and let's change the swatch right now, you'll see that everything that uses this swatch as a background color or the text color will change accordingly. So here we don't have different colors, swatches and classes for backgrounds and for text. Here we just have one swatches and uh, we uh, have uh, this consistent naming of let's say primary 60 for our main color. And if you change this color, this will automatically reflect those changes across our entire um, framework. Now, if you want to apply those colors to any object that you create, again, as easy as in text, you go to fill in this specific case, you can also apply it to stroke, click on the style button, so four dots at the right hand side here, and search for the name primary, you can type in primary 60, for example, to quickly find this color, or you can just delete that and scroll through the available uh, sections and select the color that you want to apply. Now, this is within the secondary 50 color, and it's linked to this color definition in styles, to this color token, and if we change the color token, again, this will change accordingly. 
So super easy. From here, you can also right click on the color and this is the same place for editing styles. You can edit this particular uh, style so that uh, it will you know, change to, let's say, blue. And not only here it will change to blue, but the whole secondary 50 uh, color scheme will change to blue across the entire framework. So that's it about this uh, tokens. If we create more of them, for example, for effects, you'll see them reflected in here as well. We have one effect here. You can set uh, the styles from the dots again and just create a simple drop shadow effect. And uh, also this applies to grid. For example, if you create a new frame, uh, let's use MacBook as usual and apply this grid to that, that we've defined. We uh, oftentimes use this 12 column grid and you can apply it to any frame. Now what you can do is access this layout grid and we're gonna use uh, this predefined token, which is 12 column grid. And uh, that's meant for desktop. And we use this grid, by the way, to create all of the components and lay them um, on the canvas. So for example, if you select any of the components with a lot of different elements, you'll see that they align perfectly to the 12 column grid that we work with. Um, especially the text is aligned to the grid and also all the uh, all the boxes that we've created. So, so this is how you use design tokens. I think you find this concept fairly simple and I'll see you in the next lesson.